were there any unique skill sets or traits that made him especially good at what he did? <laughs> yeah, everything. <laughs> yeah, Richard was a, um, you know, tremendous player, um, had a tremendous skill set, he had great length, um, explosive, very um, quick for his size, um, was really a, could do everything. You know, he, he started his career on the nose, which was not really his best position, but it's, but he could play it for sure. And uh, we needed him there in 01, and then we moved him back to his natural position of five and three technique. Um, he played some on the nose in passing situations, but he, he was really more of a defensive end than a, than a nose tackle. Um, but he played there because we needed him. And then, you know, after we got uh, Ted and uh, Trailer and Vince, and, you know, then, then he ended up outside. Um, but again, long, athletic, um, very powerful. It was a tough matchup for the, the interior lineman. Uh, he could win with speed. And again, some of the quicker guys, he could win with power. Um, and smart player, Richard was very smart and had good, good awareness. He was a good situational um, player and, and certainly uh, helped our linebackers um, a lot because of the, uh, he was either able to get penetration or able to, to draw, um, you know, blockers and, and tie up blockers that couldn't get to the second level on, on some of our off the ball players. Um, he was a very disruptive force, good in the kicking game, you know, played in the punt return and had some, some big plays for us going back to 01, like the punt return, um, uh, Troy's punt return against Cleveland. You know, he had a, a you know, huge block on that, was an excellent field goal blocker. Um, so he was, uh, had a lot of roles and, and, um, you know, played played in a lot of different situations. Won a lot of games with him. Um, he was a great player. Certainly deserves to be in the Patriots Hall of Fame and in the NFL Hall of Fame. Hopefully, that'll be um, coming shortly for him as well. Oh, one quick follow up. You kind of just mentioned one play uh, from his past, but in the past, you've identified specific performances or moments um, that you thought maybe were turning points for players that sort of put them on their respective paths to greatness. Just wondering, is there anything like that that comes to mind for Richard Seymour? Oh boy, there's a lot of them. Again, we won so many big games, and and you know he made an impact when he got here in 2001. And and again, playing him on the center, which was a, you know, it was kind of a new spot for him. He played defensive tackle at Georgia, in a kind of a four-man line, really more on the guard. But you know he adapted that quickly, and then you know his role shifted a little bit, but. You know, he was he was so consistent for, you know, his, you know, the early part of his career when he was up with us um, and and through those championship years that, you know, on the defensive line, it's not really about one flash play. It's it's about down after down being dominant. And I just referenced the punt return play because you don't see a lot of defensive tackles on the punt return unit. Um, but. But, you know, there were, I remember looking and showing our team plays of that punt return unit being Troy Brown, who was obviously a starter, uh, Ty Law, Lawyer Malloy, uh, Mike Rabel, Teddy Bruschi, uh, Seymour, you know, and then you had some of the other guys like, you know, Larry Izzo and, and um, uh, you know, and, and other players like that, Eric Alexander and those guys that were kind of core special team players. But there was plays on our punt return team where we had, you know, four or five starters uh, and Patriots Hall of Fame players and NFL Hall of Fame players, uh, you know, on, on punt return unit. So, uh, and Seymour was one of them. So, you know, I just th those plays kind of stood out for me because they're just a little more unusual. Thank you. You're welcome. Next question, Jim McBride, followed by Andrew Kelly. Uh, good morning, Coach. I guess I'm sticking with the Seymour theme here, and I'm wondering okay. about your memories of um, – of, of his fumble return recovery against the uh, against the uh, Bills, where he uh, he was able to get penetration, but then he had the the athleticism, the speed to to run sixty eight yards for a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, Richard could run, he could run. Uh, 
and even not on just a fumble return, but like on interception returns, you know, Harrison and Law and and uh, Eugene Wilson, those guys, uh, Asante. I mean, I, I can, you know, he is one of those guys that could go from defense to offense in a hurry and, and uh, you know, made some, some big blocks and honestly caused a lot of those interceptions or, you know, certainly some of them just because of his penetration, length, and, you know, pressure on the quarterback that, you know, were – Force disruptive or errant throws, um, but yeah, again, he could. You know, he he was very very athletic, and and uh, you know when you look at that defense at Georgia, you know he played with Stroud, uh, so he was. If I remember right, he was on the right, Stroud was on the left, and uh, I mean you talk about two, you know, two big time defensive tackles on the same defense at the same time. I mean that Georgia defense was. I mean, the entire defense was drafted, um, I think, from either 2000 or 99, whatever it was. You know, it was Bailey and they, all those guys. But anyway, um, yeah, no, he, he, had a lot of, he had a lot of explosive plays, field goal blocks, fumble scoop and score, strip sacks. Um, you know, it's, he was really certainly a big play guy. But, you know, I think when you look at those defenses, the, the combination of, you know, multiple players, and he was the centerpiece of the front. Um, but, you know, between Vrabel and McGinnis and Brewski and then, you know, eventually Ty Warren and Will Fork and, uh, you know, there, there was multiple players there, Jarvis Green, that if you got one guy, it was just hard to get them all. And, um, but again, he was the centerpiece. He was the, the most disrupted player. And, and that's why he'll be in the Patriots Hall of Fame. And that's why he'll probably eventually be in the NFL Hall of Fame, hopefully this year. Expression Andrew Callahan, followed by Andy Hart. Hey, good morning, Bill. Andrew. Um, so sticking with Seymour, uh, I, I wanted yeah. to go back to your first few practices with him. Obviously, you thought highly enough to take him as highly as you did in the 2001 draft. But when you first see him in pads and he's stringing some practices together, what was your impression of him then? Yeah, again, pretty, pretty good. Um, you know, he, he's really unlike any any other player that um, that I had coached up until that point. You know, at the Giants, we had, um, you know, some good defensive linemen, Leonard Marshall, but, you know, Richard Seymour is 6'7", Leonard was 6'2". Uh, so it was a, just a difference in, you know, posture, length, and, um, you know, I was in Denver, we had Alzado. He was... He was kind of more like the the guys we had at Baltimore, John Dutton, um, you know, uh, Bar Mike Barnes, um, you know, but, but a combination like of Barnes and Airman and Dutton all rolled into one between length, explosiveness, athleticism, quickness, you know, and those guys were really really good players, um, but. There just there haven't been many you know like him. I mean, obviously you're talking about Hall of Fame players, so there's not a long, a long list of those guys. But I I just never really had anybody like like that. And um, he was again very smart. He could do a lot of different things, game plans, uh, pass rush plans. Um, you know, playing certain plays a certain way. That that was all really pretty easy for him because the game was, the game came easy for him in terms of intelligence and. And anticipation and uh, communication along the line with guys like, uh, you know, Bruski and Vrabel and McGinnis and those guys. You know, they they all communicated well. Rodney, uh, lawyer. You know, if it was look for something or you know they see that they were able to apply it quickly and and you know use it to to make a play or to you know take care of of a problem that that we could identify pre snap. So, um, you know, those were those were big time you know strengths. It was really the whole package. Uh, but it, it jumped out pretty quickly, you know. Well, it, it, yeah, it, it didn't take long to see it. This guy was gonna gonna really be able to help us. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Next question is Phil. Uh, Chris Ryan, followed by Phil Perry. Morning, Bill. How are you? Hey, Chris. I want to ask you a little bit about um, leadership and Seymour, and kind of you in in that realm where. Does Seymour personal accountability always seem to be a big part of his leadership style and, and yours you know, as well, um, it, where you will always mention you know, we need to coach better as a part of your um, when things don't go well. How, how important is that personal accountability and 
what was um, Seymour's leadership style like in your view? Uh, what I, I, I remember Richard coming in, um, you know, as, as a young player and his, his kind of, I think, and he verbalized this, but I'd say his philosophy is kind of, you know, I have two ears and one mouth. I'm going to, I'm going to listen uh, more than I speak. And I think that was, would be a good way to sum it up. Um, he listened. He was very attentive. He took a lot of things in uh, when he spoke. I think everybody listened carefully to what he said because, you know, he wasn't just a chatterbox. You know, what, what he said was thoughtful and uh, with a good foundation. Um, he wasn't, you know, overly emotional about, you know, every time something happened, you know, to have some something, you know, some commentary on it good or bad he you know again he kind of took his time he processed things and when he spoke i think it was with uh, a great deal of um uh from the listeners uh his teammates his coaches myself all of us uh you know it was with the uh, you know you knew that he put a lot of thought into it and you knew that it was coming from um the heart and a, and a solid foundation um he just didn't you know say stuff to say it it was you know it, it was backed up by um you know solid thinking and and evidence and and so i think that type of leadership is um again well received because it's sincere um and it's you know with a a good you know good perspective it's it's not just you know a quick thought that that there was no depth to with richard there was a lot of depth and i would say really everything he he said and 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 did and um, so it was a very you know he was a, a really uh, I was I'm very fortunate I feel honored to have had the opportunity to coach Richard uh, not just as a great player but as a person and and um, you know like like a lot of players like a lot of us people like all of us you know he he had some setbacks and he had some difficult things he had to deal with along the way and and he you know, he managed them, he fought through them and overcame them and, you know, and, and had a, a very, very, very successful career. Um, and again, we, we won a lot of games with him and, and we certainly wouldn't have won as many without him. So um, I'm always appreciative of uh, Richard and what he, what he did for myself, my family, and the New England Patriots.